Hi everyone, I'm Lindell Higgins from GiveOxygen.com and I am here today to give you some breathing exercises and techniques that are relevant to COVID-19 to help you be stronger and better prepared. Before we start though, of course, make sure to please do your own research and also to consult with a medical professional before you add something new to your regimen because it's really important that you do things that are good for you and specifically for you. It's important to know that my husband had three lung collapses and um, I am actually a performer and a singer. So those very different experiences have given us a lot of knowledge to respiratory health and how the lungs operate. And um, I wanted to share some of these tools and tricks with you because I think that it will be really helpful in this time. So here's my philosophy and why I came up with this. If you're thinking about it in, if you go to do something physically strenuous, running a marathon, climbing a mountain, experts in the field would tell you to train to make sure that you can actually finish and to make sure you don't get injured. Kind of combining that with what is happening with COVID-19, essentially, obviously it is a respiratory illness, but the problem is, is that people are getting pneumonia. So pneumonia essentially inflames the respiratory system. And so what happens when your respiratory system is inflamed, it's harder to take a full and complete breath. And when your lungs cannot take a full and complete breath, they can fill with fluid and they can also fill with mucus. And also on top of which you're sick. So your body is kind of already creating extra fluid and mucus. And so it just kind of snowballs out of control. So when your body doesn't get enough oxygen, your organs actually shut down. That, that is the piece that is killing people. And so different organs for different people are shutting down, but it's based on the fact that they are not getting enough oxygen. That is why people are being put on oxygen and ventilators and different tools to try to ensure that their body still has enough oxygen to live long enough and breathe long enough to let your body actually fight this illness. If you think about it, if you're gonna go into a fight, you wanna be prepared and you wanna be as strong as humanly possible. Another piece of this from our experience in hospitals, when you are at risk for pneumonia, which essentially is someone who has obviously had a respiratory illness or a lung injury of some kind, or someone who is sick or had surgery and they can't move very much. So they're kind of confined to their bed for longer than a few days. All of those people are, are at risk for pneumonia. What they do when you are in that category and you're in the hospital, they give you different breathing exercises and breathing techniques in order to not only strengthen your respiratory system, but to push out any liquids that may have accumulated. And when you do this and you stay on top of it, um, the idea is that hopefully it doesn't snowball um, as it can, unfortunately. So the thinking behind what I'm about to tell you is that if your lungs and your respiratory system are top notch and you are strong and you are prepared then maybe if you actually do get this illness, you have a fighting chance that you can keep yourself breathing long enough for your body to do what it's supposed to do and fight this thing. I am going to teach you essentially the same breathing exercise, but done two different ways. The first way is going to be done without tools. And then the second way is going to be done with the tool that they actually give you in the hospital. And the tool that they give you um, is called an incentives barometer. I will teach you how to use this second and you actually can buy these online. They're about five or $6. I highly recommend um, doing this either at the very beginning of your day 
or at the end of your day. And the reason I recommend that you do that is because you need to not have any food particles in your mouth. You do not want to send anything that should not be in your lungs in your lungs. Plus, my favorite is to do it in the morning because it's kind of a nice energy boost. I am going to be teaching you what I call the singer's breath, and you probably didn't know you were gonna have a little singing lesson today. So first, um, get in a comfortable sitting position. It is important to do this sitting so you don't get lightheaded. So you wanna have your feet firmly planted on the ground, and you want to make sure that there's nothing obstructing your ability to breathe. So you don't wanna be wearing any tight clothing or have anything in your way. And I think we kind of all spend time in sweatpants right now, so that should be okay <laughs> for everybody. Before you start, just kind of breathe and do this with me. Just kind of breathe on your own and just realize, oh, I'm breathing. Hmm and kind of take notice, how do you normally breathe? Do you use your shoulders, do you use your chest, do you use your diaphragm? And just notice, no criticism, just notice. Just take a breath. What do you see? Just so you know, that normal breath that we do, just subconsciously, just sitting there breathing in and out, you're using about 10% of your full lung capacity. So the idea of this singer's breath that I'm going to show you is to actually push yourself to use as much of your lung capacity as possible to strengthen your entire respiratory system. If there is any fluid buildup, if you are getting sick or things like that, you are actually pushing that fluid out and encouraging it to come out. For this breath, it is important to utilize your diaphragm rather than your shoulders and your upper chest. Your diaphragm is the muscle underneath your lungs. And your diaphragm essentially gets out of the way and air can come into your lungs or it pushes up and it pushes air out of your lungs. What you wanna do is, and if you need a little assistance, you can put your hands on your lower rib cage to make sure that that's actually moving. So just take a gentle, deep breath. And try to not use your upper chest too, too much. Great. Okay, so now we're going to work on tongue position in your mouth. So you're going to take the tip of your tongue and put it on your the backs of the bottom teeth. Then you're gonna take the sides of your tongue and you're gonna push them up to your top teeth. Hi ha, but close your mouth. And the reason that you're doing that is to get your tongue out of the way. You don't want anything in the way to actually make this more difficult. You do not want to strain or injure yourself or pull a muscle. <laughs> tongue on the bottom of your teeth, push on the top of your teeth. Now try to just breathe like that. Great, so what I want you to do is now form your mouth like you are drinking a milkshake. And so just take a slow, calm breath in with everything that we just did and then a slow, calm breath out. So it comes in. Let's try it one more time. The last piece of this breath is that we want to try to get to your full lung capacity as much as possible. So don't strain yourself. This should not be exceedingly painful. Veins should not be popping out of your neck. You, um, you should still be somewhat comfortable. It will be a little difficult and it will feel a little tight, but not to the point of hurting yourself. So what you wanna do before you do that breath is to blow out all of the air that you possibly can and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more again, and then you take that singer's breath with your tongue in the right place, mouth in a circle, using your diaphragm, slow and even, hold it for three to six seconds, 
and then let it out slowly, same position everywhere else. And you'll want to do this 10 times. Let's try it. So you're gonna blow out all of the air that you have and then breathe it in. So blow it all out. Keep going. You will want to do that 10 times. Now, if you start to get a little lightheaded, then stop. That is not the goal. When you are doing this singer's breath breathing exercise, I highly recommend that if you are healthy to time yourself, kind of how long on average you can inhale. That way, in case you do get sick and you do start to have some respiratory trouble and this is a little bit more sore, and so you have to kind of push through the pain a little bit more in order to really make sure that you're taking that full breath and getting rid of as much fluid as possible. If you know how long you could do it before you were sick, you'll, you'll be able to have some sort of measure for how you can push yourself if you do get sick. And also, if you do get sick when you are done doing these breathing exercises, make sure that you gently cough <coughs> to get some of that liquid out of your lungs because you will have moved your lungs around and kind of dislodged some of it. So that'll be um, really good for you to do. If you do have a respiratory illness, um, sometimes you can be sore and your lungs can be painful so like the coughing part can be very painful so hold a pillow to your chest and just kind of give yourself some support emotionally and physically when you're coughing so it's less painful let's move on to the incentive spirometer this is an incentive spirometer and the reason that it is called that is because it gives you an incentive to breathe the amount that they are telling you to breathe so they um there are tons of these there are all these different models but um, this is the model that we got when my husband was in the hospital here are the pieces to it um, you have the measurement of volume um, essentially your lung volume um, and then you have a little little happy face and sad faces it's essentially telling you to make sure that your breath is even and so with this tool you'll be able it will tell you that you're cheating um, and then it usually has a marker on it. This one is yellow up here to give yourself a goal. Each of these comes with a chart and uh, it will tell you what on average someone who is healthy of your stats can do. So then you know what you should be able to do. And it is based on age, height, and biological gender. So for me, um, I am 30, mm -hmm. um, I am five foot seven um, and female. So it says that I should be somewhere between 2,500 and 2,600. So if you look, Near the top, you see 2,500. So I should be able to get this all the way to the top. Now, um, depending on the model that you have, they work in different ways, but they have, each of them have directions and, and things like that. So you can figure it out. This one specifically, obviously I need to get all the way up to here and I need to keep this in the little happy face zone and hope for the best. <laughs> this one specifically measures when you breathe in. What you will do with this, the same singer's breath that we're doing, sitting, feet on the ground, nothing preventing you from breathing properly. 
using your diaphragm to breathe, putting your tongue bottom of your teeth, top of your teeth, and blowing out all of the air that you have and then taking a breath in. But before we do that, I highly recommend just breathing with it a couple of times, just a regular normal breath. So you just and I get around 250, 500 regular breath. Breathe all the air out and then breathe it in. So that little rattling noise that you hear is part of the incentive portion that it stays and kind of floats in that little happy zone. <laughs> to make sure that, um, you know, that milkshake straw <laughs> that um, I told you to do, essentially kind of do the same thing on this and make sure that your lips are fully sealed around it so it's actually giving you an accurate measurement. Okay, blow everything out. And then you'll want to do that 10 times. The other thing that you want to make sure that you do is to always disinfect this piece before you start. I already did it. Um, and when you're done, you don't need to keep reinfecting yourself. And um, depending on which one you have, it will have directions for cleaning it and maintaining it and everything that you need to do with it. Um, this one, you can store this here and you're good to go. One other thing to remember if you're going to buy an incentive spirometer is to make sure you get the right one. What do I mean by that? On average, people who are biologically male usually have a, and are adults, usually have a lung capacity um, somewhere between the 3,000, 5,000 range, uh, whereas women are lower than that around kind of the 2000 range. So why is that important? So the one that I was using went to 2500. And so I'm going to show you the one that my husband uses. It looks exactly the same. However, it goes up to 4000. And if you look really closely, you can see that it's made slightly differently. Um, essentially more resistance in here. Make sure that you are getting one that gives you your full capacity. When you're using the incentive spirometer, do 10 breaths a day, and hopefully that will arm you and uh, make you strong in case you have to fight a fight that I hope you never have to fight. And thank you so much for watching.